Hello friends, welcome to Atan Purulia. I am Torit Mato. This is stage two of the ongoing series Watercolor for Beginners. In this stage, we will learn how to create forms, apply perspective, and use light and shade. Ready for the challenge? Let's begin. Till now, we have covered basic brush techniques with shapes and curves, but we have been painting shapes, those look flat. It's time to transform these basics into more dimensional forms, make them look like having some volume. Whether we call it making forms or perspective or lights and shadows, these all techniques lead to one thing, creating depth or distance. In case of landscape, the distances are quite appreciable, whereas in case of a still life or portrait, the distances are smaller. We should be able to show the difference between closer part of an object and the part which is far away. While drawing, we had seen there are methods of drawing contour lines to show shapes of an object. With watercolors, if you are using line and wash, to some extent you can use that technique, but uh, it won't look realistic. By applying colors in different values, we can create illusion of three dimensions of an object. We can also depict distance and the areas of lights and shades. So before we start painting, let's understand some basic color mixing and application techniques and how they make a lot of difference. At this stage, I am expecting you to know about the primary, secondary and tertiary colors. If we mix the colors on the palette to create a new color, we get an even tone. But if we allow the colors to mix on the paper, Without disturbing much, we get a different finish and it creates a totally different effect. If we apply a layer of different color over a dried paint, which we call glazing, we get a different effect. To create various values of a color, to lighten it, you add water more you dilute the paint, lighter the color becomes. We have seen this in stage 1. We have also seen that you can darken a color by adding a bit of black. We have also seen that you can make various shades of any secondary or tertiary color by altering warm or cool shade and also by changing the values. With that knowledge in the background, let's create a simple tree. We'll be using layering technique from light to dark. Make a basic sketch first, then apply paint. We'll paint the trunk first. Use burnt umber with a touch of black for the trunk. Use a lighter value color by thinning down the paint with water for the first layer. Once you painted the first layer, quickly load up your brush with a slightly thicker, darker value of brown and lightly drag the point along the left edge of the trunk, barely touching the outer rim of the first layer using wet on wet. You should see your darker value start to bleed and blend into the lighter wash. If you don't like the way something in particular is blending, grab a paper towel and dab it up. Paper towels make great erasers when paint is still wet. For the leaves, we are going to paint in layers using wet on dry technique. There will be similarities on how we painted the tree trunk. Only we will be using spherical setting techniques. For this next step, pay attention to where each circle lines up. This will help guide your shadows. Take a slightly large size brush and load it up with a little uh, light yellow green wash. Paint in the wash using circular motions and dipping in water as you go to help move the paint along. Let this layer dry completely before adding the shadows. When the base layer is dry, load up the brush with a deep thick mixture of sap green. With the tip, apply marks placing the shadows in a curve along the base of each circle section, adding volume to the tree.
you may remove some paints using your uh, damp brush to show the highlights if you are not happy the way it has dried you can apply another layer of dark sap green to depict the shadows and also remove some paints from the areas of highlight at the end add a shadow to show the tree grounded and also add dimension to it now we'll paint a simple landscape to evoke distance with tint shade and basic value variation using wet on dry method we'll be depicting the sky and underneath that the distant mountains in absolutely light shade of bluish green then a mountain range in front of that with a darker value of green and then another range with even darker value the foreground will paint with a bright yellow which will look like a dry patch of land or a land with lots of yellow flowers and at the absolute foreground some dark grass using burnt umber we'll use the back end of the brush to push the paint upwards for depicting sharp crests the objects closer will be deeper richer and more detailed while those far away will become progressively less detailed and faint in value now we'll see uh, some effects of lights and shadows this again is similar to making forms using various values but here more important is the direction of light the highlight or the lightest value of the color will be on that side and the shadow or the darkest value will be on the opposite side for this purpose we'll paint a simple apple now sketch the apple lightly first add a base single tone wash we'll use crimson and a touch of yellow and raw umber leave the highlight area white and some darker tone on the shadow side then wait for it to dry
apply a dark glaze on the middle and dark areas again allow it to dry apply the dark tone on the shadow side we also need to paint the cast shadow to ground the apple this way not only we are able to depict the form of an object properly but also able to capture the aspects of lights and shadows
all these effects of making form distance and lights and shadows will generally be applied together in whatever painting you do whether it is a landscape or a still life or even a portrait and you can't really differentiate what kind of effect you have made so that brings us to end of this stage you need to observe the objects or the landscape very carefully for the variation in values because of form lights and shadows and distance to understand these concepts and apply accordingly a few practices will help you understand the concept well here the key is observation you need to observe all these aspects properly to depict it on paper in the next stage we'll make some textures using watercolor and some other objects or additives these come very handy to depict some of the textures which are available in the atmosphere whether it is sand or some clouds or even some grass or any such features which we can depict using some other objects like even maybe salt or alcohol or even simple water if you haven't subscribed the channel yet please do subscribe and share it with your friends stay safe stay healthy see you in the next stage